Right, I'm making this video because I constantly get asked about the test equipment I use. And um, rather than keep repeating myself in the comments and on emails and things like that, I thought I'd just make a quick video about, about the test kit I use. Um, because there's there's a reasonable amount of it um, for testing speaker components, uh, drivers and things. So I thought I'd um, I'd go through a few of the bits of kit I use. So the meter you'll see me use most of the time is is this. Um, I quite like this meter. It's it's very quick, reasonably accurate. Um, it's an MK three two eight. Um, LCR ESR tester. Right. There you go. Can't remember where I got it. I think it was about 50 quid. Um, there's a lot it can test. Um, so I use it for inductors, capacitors, resistors, drivers, and it's pretty good. So let's have a quick look at a few components and how it works. Um, it can self-calibrate. You simply clamp the leads together and um, press and hold the test button to a menu and then it will calibrate itself so it's pretty accurate. So if we look at this capacitor here, it will give us the capacitance um, and the ESR value as well. So if you can see that. And then the volt drop across the capacitor as a percentage. So that was a 72 microfarad. Let's have a look at a 5.6 poly. Five point three two and next to nothing in terms of ESR because that's the bonus of a poly cap. They're pretty lossless. And then if we have a look at an inductor, so this should be at 1.9. So with inductors, it will give us the value in millihenries and also its DC resistance, which is one ohm. So I favor that meter. It's pretty damn good. And then if we were to test a driver, Just across the driver terminals. So 6.1 ohms and it also gives us an inductance value because it's picking up the coil of wire in there obviously, the voice coil. So it's telling us that's 0.19 millihenry, which can be quite useful. It's another tool to compare drivers together. So um, yeah, like I say, I favor this. It's a good little meter. And the other one I use, but not very often. Um, it's it's probably more accurate, but I, I just don't really like using it. It's made by Peak. Um, even though I don't use this much, this is probably the one I would recommend because it's, it's a good little meter, actually. You'll get everything you need out of it for speakers. Uh, Atlas LCR45. So if we look at... Our 72 microfarad cap again. So simply turn it on. It's telling us that's 81.4 microfarads. Now the other thing with this, you can vary the frequency it tests at, which can be quite useful because smaller value capacitors, which tend to get used in higher frequency circuits, um, you really want to be testing them at a frequency that they would be used at. Or around um, I think the kind of industry standard is 500 Hertz to test capacitors but often you'll find with this so if we measure something smaller let's measure a, a one microfarad you'll see it adjusts itself so that's 0.989 and it's measuring that at one kilohertz you see that so 
I tend to favour the accuracy of this for smaller values. Um, and then with inductors, the other thing is you can just leave this running and just clamp components on it. So I guess it's a bit quicker. So there we are. It's telling me I've got a 1.9 millihenry inductor testing at 15 kilohertz and its DC resistance is 0.55 ohms. So yeah, this is quite a good little meter as well. And then this meter, which I basically just use for continuity. Um, it's got a, a lot large ohm range. Uh, it will measure inductors and capacitors, but it's not particularly accurate. This was one of the first meters I started using, but it's um, it's reasonable. If we look at if we go two millihenry, see what it tells us about this. Let's change the leads; that would help. So one point eight five, which isn't far off the mark. So if we change it to capacitance, you have to push the button in. Let's look at this 72. Seventy-five point four. Let's look at this one. One. So it's yeah, pretty accurate across across quite a range. Um, but it doesn't really tell you a great deal. Its resolution is only to a tenth. Um, but yeah, that's made by UniT. And that's the UT603. So yeah, I'd certainly recommend that. Um, certainly a quick meter to use. And then the other bit of test gear I use in the workshop quite a lot is my signal generator, which I've had for donkey's years. Um, I think I bought it from a school when they had a sale once and I've had it ever since. Made by Farnell. Um, don't know what model it is. FO809. Yeah, there you go. So really it should be connected into an amplifier and I uh, use it through that. But I put an output socket on the back of it there, that little phono plug. With a big... I think it's a 100 ohm resistor on there to protect it so I can't load it too high. Um, yeah, it measures everything from like one hertz or gives me a test tone from one hertz all the way up to, you know, 100,000 hertz, which I'm never going to use. Um, yeah, simple dial. Gives square wave or sine wave. Um, vary the output here. Yeah, so I use that quite a bit just for really quick tests. If someone walks through the door with a, I've got a speaker and I don't know if it's outputting in the mid range. Rather than set up the measurement space, I can just whack this on the end of it and just do it by ear. So yeah, it's a good quick meter to use. So the other main part of um, test equipment that I use is um, REW or Room EQ Wizard. Um, which is a measurement piece of software on the computer and in order to use that correctly I have brought a calibrated microphone so this comes with a calibration file that you load into the software and I think it gets that microphone to like within plus minus half a dB something like that um, and I use it on a tripod so I can move it around raise it lower it depending on where I need to measure against the speaker, off axis, that sort of thing. Uh, it's USB powered, so just plug straight into the PC. And this is the measurement chamber that I put up when I need to measure. So pretty much the whole office is covered in this egg crate foam. And when I measure, I throw up all these sheets, which really um, makes this space really dead. Um, certainly dead enough to gate my measurements and uh, be able to measure pretty decently in here without any or without much room interaction so yeah it uh, it works really really well so the amplifier i use for rew is just an old um, rcam alpha 8 so i use this uh, direct so obviously no tone controls they're all defeated and um, 
this gives me a connection point down the bottom there for plugging in my leads to go to the speakers and when I'm measuring I just hit this button to switch on the connection point down the bottom which defeats the left and right I use in the office for music and things and it's a good amp um, with REW you have to obviously connect this line into your amplifier and then um, using I think it's a thousand ohm resistor off the speaker terminals connect to the line in of the amplifier and do a calibration loop and that will zero out any peaks and troughs your amplifier has and um, yeah gives you pretty much a, a flat measuring system so for me one of the most important pieces of um, test gear for repairing speakers and certainly now I'm beginning to kind of create my own <clears throat> build my own um, you need some form of good measurement um, software and you can spend a lot of money on things like um, Clio um, I think the cheapest pocket version is like 600 quid then you need a decent amplifier or you can buy their um, linear gain amplifier which is probably another 800 quid or something um, or you can use RU, R-E-W, which is free. You can download it for free. There is a professional version that you can pay for, but for what I do, there's really not going to be any benefit to, to that. Um, <clears throat> it takes a bit of setting up, which I guess with Clio, it's probably out of the box pretty much. Um, you have to buy a microphone, um, which can be a couple of hundred quid. And uh, that will come with a calibration file that you put into Roo, so your calibrated mic is, is recognised and used. And also then you need a power amplifier to um, drive the speakers you're testing. And also you then need to calibrate that amplifier so its output response is as flat as it can be. So you're testing the speaker and you, you haven't got any lumps and bumps in the frequency response uh, generated and measured by REW. So that can be a bit of a pain. Um, but once it's set up, it's a great piece of software. It's fast um, and I like using it. <clears throat> so it, it gives you normal... Um, let me turn some of these off. So it can give you your frequency response and you can adjust all the parameters. Um, I tend to use quite a narrow window, um, <clears throat> not to artificially make the measurements look good. It's just how I prefer to view them. I tend to try and get everything within a 5 dB window, so plus minus 2 dB or 2.5 dB. <clears throat> um, it can give you frequency response and phase relationship. So at the side here we have our phase angle of the drivers, frequency response here, so that's that's a good one. Um, it can give you distortion, so it will um, obviously measure the output signal from the amplifier to the speaker and compare what it receives um, using the microphone against what it's put out. Um, and from that it can measure distortion um, quite accurately actually um, often when I'm testing speakers with really poor out of tolerance capacitors or capacitors that just aren't working properly you'll get all sorts of distortion if you've got a driver which has got a bit of cone rub or um, issues like that it will show up in distortion so once you learn um, how to read the measurements you're getting you can really troubleshoot speakers um, Pretty accurately spectral decay it gives you which is quite a good one um, tends to tell you whether your um, speakers are ringing have stored energy smearing the signal um, so you can get a lot from that uh, it can tell you a lot about how the cabinets behaving whether drivers are keeping up with the signal um, and not smearing it or carrying on ringing the signal um, if your box is too hollow, um, there's a lot that this can tell you. Um, so yeah, I use this um, a hell of a lot. And really, if you're repairing speakers for people, 
doing it professionally, I really don't see how you can not have something like this. Even if you only use it for a basic frequency response, um, what that can tell you um, is really valuable. So the amount of times that um, I measure speakers, um, I think they sound OK, but I just can't hear the issues. Um, and this will highlight them. Every speaker that comes in gets measured um, straight away so I can see what it's doing or not doing. So for me, it's probably the most important piece of test kit I have. I love using it. I love setting up my measurement spacing here and revoicing a speaker if I've done a crossover upgrade or repair. Um, yeah, it's great. And, you know, designing crossovers, playing around with the component values and seeing how they affect the frequency response. Um, it's really good. So, yeah, this is probably my main piece of test equipment. So this is the crossover jig that you've seen me use in a number of my videos. And it's, it's probably one of the best things I've ever built. Um, because if you're designing and building crossovers, um, when it comes to the process of sticking the speaker in front of the microphone and then putting the crossover together. This is so easy to um, assemble um, a crossover. So the output from my power amplifier, which is connected to the computer, plugs in negative here, positive here. So that gives me a positive rail and a negative rail to crocodile clip components to. And then here I plug in the individual drivers, so tweeter, mid-range and woofer obviously if i'm just doing a two-way i'll just use the woofer and the tweeter and these pairs are connected to these so tweeter mid-range and woofer and basically this just allows me to um, using jumper wires assemble capacitors inductors crocodile clip them all together shoot measurements change components out and uh, it's it's fantastic it's really big decent size so I've got plenty of working room and because it's a clear a white acrylic I can go over it with a whiteboard marker as well so to draw out um, the crossover as I dismantle it um, so yeah it's a great piece of kit and one of the best things I've ever built gets a lot of use